Hello again, everybody. Welcome to a new Screencast Lecture. Today's topic is non-renewable energy resources. A recent lecture was called Introduction to Energy, and in that lecture we discussed what energy is and what it can do. This brings us to the question, where do we get the resources that make our energy, in particular electricity? The source of energy is known as an energy resource. Here you see on the picture in the upper left we have solar, in the top right is hydropower, bottom left wind power, and bottom right biomass. Those are all four renewable energy resources. One of the big topics common in the news and on standardized tests you might see is renewable versus non-renewable energy resources. Let's get a definition of non-renewable energy resources since we already had a definition of renewable energy resources in a previous lecture. A non-renewable energy resource is one that cannot replenish itself within a reasonable amount of time. Once we use that energy resource, poof, it's gone. Non-renewable energy resources are often called fossil fuels because they come from buried, long dead organisms. In this lecture we're going to be taking a look at what are some examples of non-renewable energy resources? What are some pros and cons of each of those non-renewable energy resources? So let's start with petroleum. Uh, most of you will probably know that by the word oil. Oil is used in many, many different ways. Uh, you can see it from this chart on the left. One of the ways that might surprise you is oil is used to make plastics. But oil is primarily used for transportation fuel, gasoline, diesel, and it can also be used to produce electricity. With oil, how can we get electrical power from oil? First of all, burning oil releases heat. The heat is used to boil water and produce steam. The steam spins a turbine. And the spinning turbine moves the generator and produces electricity for us to use. The process that we just saw here is how almost all electricity is generated. The key is, is to somehow get that turbine to spin, which will move the generator. A lot of them that use heat, if you're burning things, it will use heat to make water boil and cause steam that shoots through and moves the turbine. Oil, petroleum, why is it a good choice? A major reason why we want to continue using oil or petroleum is that the infrastructure is already built. Um, you could probably think of a dozen gas stations close to your house, whereas if you had to fill up your gas tank with uh, natural gas, you might have a hard time figuring out how to do that. Gasoline and other uh, oil products are very efficient. You get a large amount of energy released when oil is burned. It burns very, very well. What are some negatives of using oil? Well, when you burn it, it's going to release air pollution. Also, transporting oil can be a problem. Like, for example, in ships, in an oil tanker, if the oil tanker breaks, you can get an oil spill, which is a very, very bad disaster. Here you see a photo and a short clip of an oil spill. Natural gas is another fossil fuel choice. Natural gas is a naturally occurring mixture that contains mostly methane, methane gas. This is what a methane molecule looks like. A methane molecule is flammable. When it is, goes under combustion, which is a reaction with oxygen, the methane molecule will release energy and form carbon dioxide and water. A common use for natural gas that you are probably familiar with would be heating. So home heating and businesses, that's an excellent choice to use for natural gas. You probably have seen a gas furnace that kind of looks like this. This is how a gas furnace works. You'll have an intake vent that brings air to the furnace. That's going to be cold air and then it's going to warm it up and then that warm air is going to be shot out another vent, usually on the floor, and that uh, will blow out with hot air. Natural gas is also very commonly used for heating and cooking. So some people have an electric stove 
and some people have a gas stove. If you have a gas stove, it's most likely going to be natural gas. This is a picture of what to look for. In the science classroom, you may have seen a Bunsen burner being used. The Bunsen burner uses natural gas. So where does natural gas come from? Well, it comes from the ground. Here you see a natural gas well, and we do have natural gas wells in Ohio and throughout the country. How does it work? Well, it burns. Natural gas is a flammable gas. And another source of methane gas besides underground, um, for example, would be cows. So cows eat grass and through its digestion process it does release gas and some of that gas is methane. So natural gas, why is natural gas a good choice? So what are some positives about using natural gas as an energy resource? Natural gas is considered to be the cleanest burning of the fossil fuels. What that means is that when you burn natural gas it does not give off nearly as much air pollution as say something like coal or uh, oil or burning firewood things like that if you have a gas stove at home you're pretty aware of this because when you're burning the the burners you see the flames on your gas stove but you don't see really any smoke coming off of it clean burning another reason why natural gas is a good choice here in the united states is that the united states has a very large supply of it it's available in many different states including ohio as you know there's always bad that comes with the good one of the uh, negative results of natural gas is that even though it is clean burning there is some some air pollution that's given off natural gas does add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere but again it's at a much lower level than oil and especially coal there are some concerns about hydraulic fracking they think that uh, hydraulic fracking may pollute the air it may pollute the water especially underground water there are even some people who think that it may lead to earthquakes our next energy resource is nuclear. Now this one doesn't quite fit in very well in the non-renewable or renewable definitions. Nuclear power plants use energy released during nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. A common fuel in nuclear fission plants is uranium-235. Fission is when an atom of uranium-235 is split into smaller parts when that atom is split it releases a tremendous amount of energy and that energy can be used to heat up water and then that water turns to steam and you know the rest of the, so the, the steam turns the turbine the turbine moves the generator and the generator induces electricity this is the reactor core this is where the fission reaction takes place this is going to be extremely hot as that energy is released the heat will heat up water which will create steam that steam will shoot through and spin the turbine which moves the generator and then in addition to that you have some more water that cools off the steam and the uh, water that was heated up by the radiation and that cooling water comes out of the cooling tower and that releases steam so when you see big billowing clouds coming out of the cooling tower that's not air pollution that's steam as you can see in this photo here. One of the real positives about nuclear energy is that it does not emit carbon dioxide. Again, we just said that this uh, big billowing cloud is exactly that. It's a cloud. It's water vapor. Here in the United States, we have a very large supply. We have at least a 200-year supply of fuel to run our plants at current levels. We mentioned that gasoline is very efficient, where you get a lot of energy out of a gallon of gasoline. Well, nuclear power uranium even more so so if you have one kilogram of uranium so that's 2.2 pounds roughly that has the energy potential of over 40,000 pounds of coal negatives what are some negatives of nuclear energy the biggest one is the dangerous waste remains for thousands of years so after anything that's in contact with the core or anything like that is going to become radioactive and then that radioactive waste needs to be disposed of somewhere there is the potential of catastrophic disaster. Uh, you may have heard of the Chernobyl disaster in Ukraine. And this was a uh, nuclear power plant that uh, melted down. Okay, that brings us to our final energy resource, coal. 
Coal is a rock which can be burned as a fossil fuel. It is mostly carbon, but also contains sulfur and some other things. Okay, this is a neat clip because it takes us kind of on a tour of an underground coal mine. Okay, let's talk about how we get electrical energy from coal. Now we're going to focus a little bit more on this because coal is the number one way that electricity is produced in the United States and especially here in Ohio we get almost all of our electrical energy from from using coal. So let's take a look at the process of generating electricity from coal. First question we want to ask is what type of potential energy is coal itself? So if we take a look at coal, we have this big pile of coal sitting here. It's just sitting there. It's not doing anything. So what form of potential energy is that? Well, it's uh, stored chemical energy. And a good way to think about that, again, if you think about chemical energy, chemical energy is, is anything that can burn. So a sandwich, you can burn a sandwich, a Frito. We saw that in one of the videos where um, I burned food. I burned Frito and things like that. That is all forms of stored chemical energy. Coal is another form of stored chemical energy. It can burn. So you put the coal here, and the coal is burnt. When things burn, they release what type of energy? Well, thermal energy, of course. And so we now have from chemical energy, then heat is released. The heat in the furnace is going to boil water. The water boiling is going to become steam and that steam is under high pressure. That high pressure steam is going to shoot out through the pipes and then it's going to spin the turbine. So that high pressure steam shooting through, spinning the turbine, that spinning turbine is a kinetic energy, it's an energy of action, and that's going to be considered mechanical energy. That spinning turbine mechanical energy is going to move the generator, which is going to induce the electricity. So we go from chemical energy here, in the coal to heat burning the coal that coal makes steam that steam moves the turbine mechanical energy and that mechanical energy moves the generator and induces electrical energy go ahead and write down this uh, energy transformation list here's a clip The building you see behind me is one of Ontario Power Generation's fossil fuel generating stations. This one uses coal. Other fossil fuel generating stations use oil and natural gas to make electricity. In essence, it's a factory that converts the energy from burning coal into a flow of electrons, or what is commonly called electricity. Coal is shipped to the station by freighter or train. A series of conveyors transports the coal into the plant where it passes through enormous pulverizers that grind the coal into a fine powder prior to burning. The pulverized coal is fed into a large industrial furnace that is surrounded by boiler tubes filled with water. The intense heat from the burning coal heats the water in the boiler tubes and turns it into steam. The steam is transferred under pressure at high speed through large pipes to turbines like these. It's this pressure and flow that pushes the blades of the turbine, causing it to spin. The turbine is connected to a generator that contains a rotor. Large electromagnets are attached to the rotor 
that is located within coils of copper wire called the stator. As the generator rotor spins, a flow of electrons is created in the stator. This produces electricity that can be stepped up in voltage through the station transformers and sent from the station across transmission lines. The steam from the turbine is condensed back to water using cooling water from the lake and pumped back to the boiler where it is reheated to continue the process. Okay, let's talk about the positives of using coal. The biggest advantage of coal is that it is very abundant in the United States, especially here in Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia. Tons of coal all over the place. You can find it without much trouble at all. Another big advantage of coal is that it is very easy to transport. A barge is the cheapest way to transport goods, and coal works very well for transport by barge. Here's a clip showing a coal barge on the Ohio River. Another cheap and easy way to transport coal is by train. Notice that you do not need to have special cars and covered and sealed or anything like that. You just have an open car, put the coal in it, you're good to go. Let's compare that to oil. If you want to transport oil, you need to put oil in tanks. It's a liquid, so it cannot just be put in an open car. In addition to being easy to transport, coal is very easy to store. Here you're seeing a picture that you just take coal and you put it in a big pile. It's not going anywhere. It's a solid. You don't need special containers, you just leave it there and it stays there. Let's contrast that to oil, which again is a liquid. You need special tanks to hold oil. It's more expensive and it's more uh, material consuming to store oil than it is to store coal. However, now we get to the negatives. Negatives of coal, pretty big. Coal is considered to be the dirtiest burning of the fossil fuels that are commonly used to produce electricity. One of the big issues with coal, burning coal, is that if you have high sulfur coal, when you burn that coal, that sulfur will get up in the atmosphere. When the sulfur reacts with water in the atmosphere, it can make acid, and that acid can uh, come down as what's called acid rain. Acid rain has been shown to damage plant life. And acid will also react with certain certain rocks like limestone. Here you can see acid being put on limestone and it's bubbling up. That same limestone can be damaged by acid rain. Like here you see on the left, this is what this uh, sculpture looked like. And over time, with, due to acid rain, here it is on the right. Okay, here's a quick question for you. Go ahead and read this and see if you can figure out what the correct answer is. The following steps describe the process of generating electricity by burning coal in a power plant. 1. The coal fire converts liquid water to steam. 2. The steam rotates fan blades of a mechanical turbine. 3. The shaft of the turbine spins an electric generator. 4. The electric power is delivered to the consumer over long distance power lines. Which energy transformation occurs during this process? Go ahead and take a moment and come up with the answer. Okay, here's the answer. Hopefully you chose letter B. Now this is a uh, blue star on here. You don't need to write that into your notes. Well, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully this was beneficial to you, and we'll catch you next time. See ya.